Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank the organizer that invited me in this very special event. And thank you also for the uh, UEH who provide us with a very nice <coughs> presentation space. Um, I would like to say my apologies actually because my presentation may be not academic at all. There will be no diagrams, no figures, no chart, no statistics, just image and maybe some words. And the topic may be also not directly related with the urbanism, but I believe that rural is also has a significant relationship with urbanism. It seems that the issue of rural area is not so much discussed, except there is a one conference about non-urbanism in India some years ago. Okay. Um, Professor Kelly mentioned about uh, she quoted, uh, you put the Kenneth Preston that maybe what happened in rural area is a kind of form of resistance. It's maybe, but why we resist? Maybe it's a kind of alternative uh, thought. Maybe it's another truth or another possibilities. And maybe. Professor Ken Young mentioned about. Uh, his series of experiments, it is very interesting and learning how building should biomimic uh, the nature. I'm just thinking, as a villager, why not we just accept the nature as it is? Uh, in the last eight years, I become a villager. I moved to the, uh, from the city to the uh, to the feelings to learn actually. So this is part of my learning process in the feelings. Maybe you, if you could consider it just a storytelling is part of uh, At least you could see another form of truth and not other things. Indonesia, more than 70,000 islands, more than 400 ethnic groups. Someone said about 500 maybe. 80,000 villages with a total population more than uh, 120 million people. The urban relationship is, has been reciprocal, I think. It has been like that since long time ago. I mean, the relationship between Desa and Kota. But then the cities exploded and we have like a hungry giants in the name of modernization. This is more the story of the rural area. From the perspective of uh, villagers, I think. Uh, there is some issue, but it's also given a kind of background that I try to think about that uh, five or five steps. First, it's, it's more than just a beautiful scenery, because now city people perceive it as a ah, it's beautiful, natural scenery only. And the second is what your social character of values that now is very much under threat. And three of the phenomena which is happening everywhere in Indonesia, especially uh, in the rural area, that the gap, the economy, the wealth, uh, is widening, and then now every government or every area thinking about tourism industry, whether this is a solution or it's even make the situation worse. And this is a small thing that I could add. What can architecture uh, or what can architecture do? This kind of uh, rapid modernization process is a very important 
precious funeral period, I think. It's not about the culture, but also about the idea. <coughs> the relationship that I believe is something like that. There will be no sustainable environment without social sustainability. And there will be no social sustainability without cultural sustainability. And there will be no cultural sustainability without environmental sustainability. Uh, that is what is happening now. Everything is like a shaking. First, uh, it's about the rural area, which is I perceive. This is more than just beautiful uh, scenery. Rural agrarian culture based on the deep understanding with the Mother Earth as a source of life. But I learned this morning from Professor <coughs> Kangsun that this is the beginning also that uh, human beings have a, a conflict and try to, to attack each other. What I saw uh, it is a kind of knowledge. So you, we can perceive culture as knowledge also, which is uh, very important that maybe we, most of us as modern people already forgot about the dynamic of the nature, about how to cultivate the land, and how work uh, in harmony as part of uh, the, the, the element of, uh, of the characteristic of the nature. Uh, the water, the sky, uh, the air, and everything. It's, it's considered as a one holistic uh, system. It's from the beginning, like, from long, long time ago. You see the relief of the temple and everything. It shows the relationship between daily life with the surrounding nature. While we now, as modern people, we perceive that outside there is like wild, uncertain, not healthy. It's a different perception. I think. Um, and we often think about the harmonious relationships between uh, yeah, all uh, animals, uh, all living beings, uh, trees uh, become like a, a one. Of course, there's uh, always uh, good and bad, but good and bad are inside us. The agrarian culture actually is about a uh, spirit of togetherness, collective living, and how to sustain uh, the nature. I think this is a very important point if now we talk about uh, how we could save the planet. The social cultural values is under threat because for a long period of time, village is considered like a poor area, and that's the beginning of a, a problem, I think. But uh, this kind of, of peaceful nature, I don't know whether it is still able we we see it in a near future or they will be disappeared. But uh, some changes is really happening. I mean, in the village, process of modernization, some villages, of course, uh, getting raised also uh, as part of the trickle down effect, part of the uh, larger global economy. They try to modernize uh, themselves. In some cases, if the, the culture have, still have a very a strong and strong structure, maybe the bargaining power is bigger, so they can keep uh, the cultural identity more or less uh, more uh, clear compared to other things. This kind of uh, ceremony is still there, some part, but it's uh, also starting disappearing. So it's uh, because the asymmetrical growth of modernization. 
what is happening is the first uh, stage of the first phase of urbanization is younger people from the village area, rural area, move to the city to find a job. And the second phase, the values of the cities now penetrating the, the, the rural area and change the rural lifestyle. Consumerism is very, very apparent in the, in the village in everywhere. And it creates a kind of clash from the agrarian culture with a global urban industrial capital, capitalistic uh, approach. It is very, very real. Maybe to some people it's not so worrying, but I'm, I'm still thinking actually whether it is good or bad, but at least I could see that something is happening. This kind of uh, houses is starting to grow, and the setting is like this. Um, we go out our side. Is it cultural survival or is it just matter? So why bother it? So whatever happens is happen. I that quote this um, is from the village Herman. Having lost any consensus on ultimate meanings and values, the industry of the world still itself primarily on the basic of economic values. Government, in combination with all powerful multinational corporations, based policy decisions on misguided vision of unlimited future economic development. While problems such as climate change, poverty, and disease are becoming more salient to public awareness, it is still economic values that drive the most powerful corporate and political institution on the planet. Of course, then the, the gap is widening. The brain drain, the younger generations left and then they were somewhere as a migrant worker, as a working in the city or like that. Property rate, uh, rate is getting higher and higher. The rural culture is shifting. Some stick poor, but the new rich is there. So, if you see this, is uh, like a common village, uh, typical houses. I don't know what is happening. Something like that. It's it's almost everywhere. They just try to imitate what is happening in the big cities that they, they learn from the media or architecture magazine or maybe some architect also have a very nice in the village um, Yeah, most of the people believe that maybe tourism is one uh, because the young generation is getting less interested in becoming a farmer so what might be the, the solution for the village economy? Maybe tourism. So many villages transform itself to be part of the tourism industry. It's a possible economic opportunity. Beautiful nature, culture, and exotic lifestyle become common commodity. It is like two sides of the same coin. This is what is happening. It's near my place. Cafe, restaurant, it's growing out of the rice field. But there's also another alternative in tourism. They more talk about the cultural or ecotourism. And this is just two examples. But there are more different kinds of 
uh, expression of the tourism industry. What is worrying is actually the cultural values might be uprooted, especially among the younger generation. And the new generation is a kind of cut off from their cultural root, which is not just the cultural as a expression, but the knowledge to live in harmony with the nature. So the, if the knowledge is gone, then, then maybe the, the whole uh, construction of the uh, living in harmony with the nature is maybe also, also collapsed. It is more than the economy, I think. But the knowledge is, is more important. The culture is the knowledge. Would it be still possible to be restored? If we visited like some times ago, the way we perceive the nature is very different. Now we perceive nature as the resource of the source of materials, of the resource of the industry. But at the time we perceive Mother Earth as a beautiful young lady full of vitality. We respect the animals. I tried to quote, which I think this is very important. This is the values. This is <coughs> maybe we as an Asian share this much similarities in this uh, angle. It is very important to restore the broken relationship between human beings and the spirits. Those spirits that reside in trees, grass, water, springs, lakes, even in the sky, the cloud, everywhere, that the belief is, well, it's, just, it's getting like almost forgotten, but still there are some, some remain, I think. The ritual is still, still there, we, we practice it. So this is not just celebration, but this is a, like a visual prayer actually. Every component has a meaning. It says something. It reminds something. Of course, uh, it's 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 like a prayer, or uh, we praise uh, the nature of, of God. But it, it also teaches us about another layers of values. And it's happened uh, a few days ago when we finished uh, to restore the spring uh, water place and, and they organized again this kind of uh, celebration. And what is interesting is during the construction, uh, the, the spirit of that place is brought somewhere else because it might disturb the, uh, their existence. But after the renovation is done, that man on, on the... <coughs> he asked the spirit to come back again, because the, the, uh, the construction process is over. So please come back again. This kind of uh, relationship, I think it's, it's important. At least showing the, the respect, honor to the uh, element of, of the nature of the earth. Now, this is a, a kind of uh, experiment that I, I try to, to do something, which in a way, try to, to start what might be still possible to do something for the earth, uh, for, to the, for the earth uh, in, in the rural area. For the moment I'm thinking about the, the architecture language, because um, maybe it's very superficial. Yeah, it's, it's, but actually more than just aesthetic. Um, 
it's the, a matter that I'm thinking how to survive the, the rural culture. I make a rural uh, laboratory. It's a kind of small design studio in, in my own house. And we try to think that design might be as a strategy. And this is like some point. First, uh, use the available building skill sets. Most of the workers are farmer, part, and then part-timer they become a building worker, but actually they are farmer. So the skill set is like everybody can do everything. And the second is to think about the local materials, and they know how to do it. They have like a local skill, which I think is important. And the third, the idea is to enhance the local economy. Because try to put the money circulating on the village, rather than buying expensive, fancy materials from, from the city. I try to use what is uh, available there. It's what I did. Something very, very simple and small. And drawing, just to communicate, simple, simple drawing. And sometimes <coughs> they have a long discussion, and I can just uh, let them have time to to think and to to enjoy the the confusion a little bit, and then suddenly they uh, able to find the the way. I try to improve. The, to challenge actually some uh, some other possibilities. They don't know that I'm an architect actually, so it's, it's good. Some old men that they don't know how to to read the drawing, so I make like a one-to-one -one molding or, or yeah, and they can do that. They work sometimes with not very proper tools, and if I ask them to like something straight, then it's like a not really straight. But then I think it's it's advantage. So, well, don't we make it something which is not straight? Let's celebrate the imperfection. Some that basic drawing maybe is needed just to, to give a little guidance. But uh, in reality, it, it's always uh, impro improvised uh, on, the, on the field. When we make a, like a structure, I ask someone to climb up and, how is it? Oh, I still wobbling. Then add another sticks. How is it? Yeah, it's it, but still not stable. Okay, add another sticks. So I have no drawing and, and yeah. finally the two things it's standing. And using the local materials and try to create a kind of dialogue and understanding with the with the the characteristic of, of the soil species. It's very sticky during the rainy season, and it's very hot uh, during the dry season. Yeah, it's 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 fun to have this kind of uh, a play. Yeah, this is the work in drawing, and, and yeah, this is more how it looked like today. I did not cut any single trees and try to place the, the building in between those existing trees. Because I think that's the value of the rural, rural area that we have to respect the nature. It's from the different uh, side. Uh, maybe it is, uh, it's a kind of playground actually, while we were working with the uh, with the villagers building something. And 
In this case, design is not decided by architect through the drawing, through measured drawing or precise drawing, but it's just an invitation for participation to play, create, and maybe at the end, no one knows who designed which part and just, just do it. And the challenge is uh, continues, trying to make something three-dimensional and try to play with a different kind of uh, metrics available where it's not precision, but it's, it's fun to have this kind of uh, play. And maybe this is uh, other world, uh, again with the local community. Uh, it's part of the Catholic pilgrimage actually in Sanda Sono. I was asked to build the, the beginning of the uh, Via Dolorosa route. So this is a place for people washing their, their uh, hands and, and feet before uh, taking the pilgrimage route. So the idea is to make something which is using local materials and blend it with the surrounding nature. In this case, uh, stones become like a main materials. And it's, it's very simple. It's done by villagers. And in the last few years, I have uh, the opportunity to work together with the Tibetan uh, Buddhist community in, uh, to build their monastery in East, East Java. What is very interesting to me, of course they have like a special uh, requirement, but the knowledge about the relationship between the land with the nature still very much there. I mean, in, in other modern society, maybe that ability to, to talk, to have dialogue, or to communicate with the land is already gone. But they still have it. They know how to, to communicate, yeah, to talk with the land, with, of course, series of ritual. And I think this is very, very important. We have to, to learn again. Okay. This is part of the Asian culture, I think. We should maybe revisit it, that, that kind of knowledge, how, how we embrace the nature in a more holistic way. And the area is quite big. Uh, and we try to place the building in a rather careful way. And we use a lot of uh, local materials and we do it uh, by hand. So we place it uh, part by part, piece by, by piece, very slowly. Uh, take years to build it. And if there's a a big stone then at the time the contractor said that oh, there's a big stone. Should we bring the and uh, what about the, the drawing? The wall is should go oh no, the wall can turn around I think, and keep the stone. Because uh, it's it's important. It's, we have to yeah to to weave or not to well, we destroy the nature, but not that much, hopefully. It's still an ongoing process. Yeah, to conclude is um, the existence of the rural culture. Because I'm thinking about 
survival of the rural culture. It depends on the survival of the environment. The physical destruction as well as the social cultural destruction must be avoided. I don't know if it's still possible. But there is some hope which is I saw from the habit or the values of the life of the simple people in the village. Something like honest, straightforward, simple. About the energy of life, which I think it's, it's And also, creativity, ingenuity is still there. <coughs> the spirit uh, of making is very much there, it's not dying. The adaptive and flexible attitude, I think. People still somehow have it, I think. This, uh, Hopefully, it's a sign of a, a good hope. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.